Chris, and I'm Jazz Sequence on the internet. I'm joined, as always, by Binary Gary, Gary in real life, and Allison Plus, Allison in real life. Gary is an amateur firefighter. Allison is an amateur firefighter, and I am also an amateur firefighter. <laughs> because, the entire, fire. because the entire country is on fire. It's true. Uh, this is a show where uh, we sit around and stare at each other for about 40 minutes and nothing happens at all. Um, at some point, there is possibly a topic given to us that Gary and I don't know anything about, not that we know anything at all, uh, and um, given to us by Allison, of course, and uh, we then attempt to discuss the topic. Uh, and then at the end, we answer questions that are submitted by you, the listener uh, or viewer, if you're watching us on YouTube. Um, you can are there viewers questions. that are not also listeners? I, you know, if I had that level of analytics, Gary, I would be... I, don't <laughs> I would be podcasting with you. <laughs> That's where you would go with this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what comes after that. It would yeah. be much better off. It doesn't really matter you, because there, we only get like four views on the videos. You and, you and Elon would be summering and together. Allison watching twice. <laughs> I might just put us... Maybe I'll just put us on an external monitor like on loop during my work day just so I can like... Like National Coworking Day, and I'll just well, like. Well, I, I do have us. I do have the the video. I'll like randomly, like every once in a while, I'll, I'll change the video. So in the header of our website at binaryjazz.us, uh, it plays a video of one of the episodes. It's and I rotate that, you know, periodically as I think about it. So I do have us like playing. I mean, I don't know how many views are the website just randomly playing the video for someone. I don't know if that counts. If they're just sitting, staring, yeah. looking, looking at us lovingly. Watching <laughs> us with no sound and seeing how silly we look. Yeah. That makes sense. So let's get into it because I don't want to forget how to pronounce this. <laughs> oh, you looked up how to pronounce this. Oh, yes. I've been walking around my apartment repeating it to myself because I'm convinced. <laughs> so just, just in the interest of uh, a full disclosure, Chris and I still don't know what the topic is. We do know Allison said a minute ago. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. So, well, I've that only was the excitement. It's <laughs> one, yeah. <laughs> it's only it's one of those things I've only ever seen. You know, when you've only ever seen it in print, and then you're like, oh, if I have to say this aloud, I should probably. I'll, make I'll, sure. I'll help you out. Farfalle. <laughs> oh, I know this. <laughs> As the Italians say. Gelato. <laughs> Gelato. <laughs> I don't know why this is an Italian. Do, is anybody, like, what is, what, I don't know what this is. I know it's very Italian. My, my no, Italian teacher always used to do this, but I don't, I don't know what the this listeners is. listeners were, were doing hand gestures as we enunciate our Italian. Yeah. It's, it's, you put your, your, your hand together in like a, Quasi fistish thing. You put your sort of a muppet, and, <laughs> like you're yeah, yeah, like you're, like if you're doing it, if you're facing it towards your your fingers towards the person you're talking to, it would be like you're making a puppet sound thing, but you do it up and you kind of shake your hand like. If, yeah, if Kermit was looking up, <laughs> <laughs> that's what this hand gesture right. would. Be. Yes, and shaking his head. Yes. I really <laughs> wish I had some like like googly eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I. They're not within arm's reach, but I have some, <laughs> not shockingly. <laughs> are they the kind that have of sticky backs or are they um, the kind that have no stickiness and you have to add glue? Neither, um, although I do have some of those. I'm talking Wait, about- the, how, how is that possible? Like they either do or don't have sticky backs. The, what, what is neither? Neither defines like a new dimension neither, of- like it's, it's like a, 
I wish I, I, if I knew exactly where they were, I would leave camera to go find them. But that could be like a 30 minute ex <laughs> adventure in my apartment. Our topic this episode is Allison's googly eyes. <laughs> Just like a tour of, part of my apartment being like, look at my craft selection. No, but the ones I'm talking about, it's like a, a plastic loop that loops under your finger or like over oh, your okay. finger. And then has- We have- a set of those on our um, faucet in the kids' bathroom. So it looks like the faucet is a nose. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really good. See, and then I would know exactly where it was living. Anyway, puppets live in my apartment in various places. That's not surprising. Yeah, that's just a thing. A hazard of, of a, a loopy job path, career path. Um, okay, so the topic this week, which, yep, now I've completely forgotten how to pronounce it. Mission is, accomplished. <laughs> I know, a lot. I'm totally kidding, yeah. I knew that was the goal. It's nudiostertion. Nudiostertion? Yeah. Mm. I can there are a lot of pieces to that word. Yeah, it's N-U-D-I-U-S-T-E-R-T-I-A-N. Okay, so breaking this down by part of the word is not going to go anywhere because I don't know what any of those pieces mean. No, I wouldn't either. <laughs> um, have we had a word ending in stertion on this show before? Uh, listeners, have we had a word ending in stertion on this podcast before? Call a friend. <laughs> Oh, gosh, Unfortunately, we do not have a call in. We should have a live call in. We should like, I don't know, I don't, but they wouldn't. I mean, we don't live stream, so. But that, but yeah. So there's no way that we. How creepy would that be? If like, it would be pretty creepy. I'm getting a call from a listener. <laughs> <laughs> They've sensed that we asked a question. Oh, but what if we had like a toll free hotline? People could call and leave stupid messages or great messages. Sorry, sorry, listeners. <laughs> well, stupid messages are acceptable too. Yeah. I mean, all, all messages are great because it means people care. Um, and we yeah, love it so, when people care. <laughs> but listeners, if you're listening, you can ask us a question on binaryjazz.us, on the forum, on the website, or on Twitter. That's at true. Binary Jazz. Okay. Be careful how you phrase your question, though, because the Twitter um, – <laughs> what do you call the person who uses the, the account? The Twitter account holder – um, it's pretty picky about the formatting. <laughs> a little bit salty for certain for certain Twitter users. <laughs> the, the salty semantics of it all. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> the The only question that you submitted to the Twitter account was, "Can I ask a question?" That was the question. Because you followed it by saying, "Please arrange these items." <laughs> In, in, please categorize these items, which is not a question. You assume there is not a question coming. <laughs> <laughs> so it's less, I guess. But in, in this case, it was like less salty, more sugary, probably, because of the question. That's true, yeah. <laughs> New to you, uh, This is the, it's an underwater sea creature uh, living, that lives in uh, coral reefs. Uh, it is, its primary predator is an octopus, uh, octopi, and um, it lives in extreme temperatures, um, but not like that extreme. Like it's not like, no. it's not like the creatures no. that like live like right at the, the uh, fumaroles, like the, the, the vents uh, um, coming up from, from the Earth's crust. It's, it's like, it needs a little bit less than that. Like, Maybe like, yeah, it's the next thing up, nudie stertion. Um, no, because stertion um, <laughs> sounds like sturgeon and therefore fish. No, stertion um, is uh, the suffix is um, uh, the act of um, abrading something. So abrasion, um, I think. So nudio stertion is um, uh, nudio, of course, is a, a category of citrus. So anytime you were grinding citrus in your kitchen, a certain kind of citrus in your kitchen, it's new yesterday. So when you're making when you're making zest of some kind, you'd be you'd be creating a you'd be you'd be a new yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So is it kind Obviously. of like, but can you use it like overexerting yourself? So like, don't nudie insert yourself. <laughs> I, I, I don't think, I think that would violate some, some laws. <laughs> like just English language in public. laws or just. <laughs> yeah, indecent exposure. I think that might just be assertion. a I think that might just be a Florida thing, Gary. Interesting. Um, um, I had a conversation on Twitter today. Uh, often on Twitter, people ask me why is Florida, um, and the question today related to some lady that was um, running from the police and followed by a herd of cows. Um, <laughs> cows helped find the police, um, and the answer why is Florida is that our um, open government laws are pretty insane here. So like all police records are public. Oh. So the ratio of weird stuff that happens in Florida is slightly greater than it is in other states. Um, but the media exposure and publishing of it um, is a bit fetishized at this point. Uh, and that's okay. I like it. I like how bizarre the state is. And I like that it all happens like in the public eye. If you do something really squirrely and stupid, people are gonna know about it and laugh at you. And you will be a Florida man. So I was going to say, surely, surely you follow Florida Man. Uh, I don't really have to, but yes. <laughs> That's so interesting. That, you know, I didn't, I didn't know that there was like a direct tie to like why there would be so, so much more Florida out there. I, I, you know, um, Norcross made a good point too. It's the third. I think it was Norcross made the point. It's the third largest state. So I mean, there's a lot of squirrely stuff happening anyway. Um, but yeah, I third be, largest state is that in terms of that's in terms of population. Not population, po yeah. yeah, not in size. Population, yeah, yeah. Although the county I'm in is the largest county in the U.S. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because back in I believe it was the '70s, um, the city government was doing some really squirrely things, and the feds came in and dissolved the city government and merged it with the county. <laughs> nice. Because yeah, they were on the take for a lot of money. Um, that was pre. Um, Sunshine laws in Florida, so I don't know. I'm sure we could find out some stuff about it, but I don't think we get all the juicy details. When you, you call know, things, like the guy that was, when you call things sunshine laws, it seems so friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Anything well, can be a sunshine law, and you're just like, okay, I, I, I'm kind of into this. <laughs> I support that wholeheartedly. <laughs> yeah, it's like a horrible regime-like law, and you're like, oh, but it's the sunshine law. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder, I wonder how that plays on ballots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm immediately more into the idea of something that's called a sunshine law. As opposed to a darkness law. Just like, or a new assertion law. <laughs> I, I'm not even reading this proposal. I, no. Or yes. that I don't dark, know. I don't care about those damn new assertions. Yeah, look, I'm fine. They can do what they want as long as they keep to themselves, right? Oh, I no. still... I still okay. So, so the other reason why why nudie assertion sounds like a fish to me is because of yeah. nude prank. So, nudie nudie assertion is is some sort of uh, what's what's it called? They don't have bones. I don't know. I'm just... cartilage, cartilaginous, like amoeba, like a like a jellyfish. Right. Oh. Is a. I was, I was thinking like sharks. Obviously. Blank. Yeah. It's a it is a blank. Yeah. <laughs> is the thing that I am drawing right now. Yeah. <laughs> Listeners, if you'd like to submit, you can call at one eight hundred binary jazz. You should be careful throwing out numbers like that. I know I should. Something <laughs> five 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 binary jazz. Yeah. Oh, Which is probably a sketchy number in some Eastern European nation. I don't even know if that's the right number of digits. By wait, what do I do? I'm phonetically You're counting. I don't lie here. Well, yes. I was like, that's yeah. far too few numbers. <laughs> that's not how I do phone numbers. <laughs> like, your phone has a BI key and a Nary key. I, what? I need to upgrade. You did it so genuinely, though, that I was like, he must be doing something more in his brain that, that makes this make sense. <laughs> So for, for what it's worth, Chris, uh, Chris has the hardest task of all in this show because he wakes up and sits down and talks about things like nudio assertion. Yes. And um, it's true. The Dyson sphere and <laughs> other, you know, things you shouldn't start your day with. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Less than an hour ago, I was asleep. Yes. Yeah. I feel also like um, 
there is an elephant in the room, a nudiosturgeon. Maybe elephant is the wrong animal. Yeah, elephant is definitely the wrong animal to use before me at this point. Um, the root word is not nude. It is spelled differently. Yes. Great. It's also not spelled like nudibranch. Well, although maybe it kind of is. Because who the hell knows how that is spelled? <laughs> N-U-D-E-B-R-I-N-C-H, I think. Um, well, cardio um, is like, you know, like a body system. Is there a nudio body system? No. Okay. Well, that was that's, that's the system of nudity. <laughs> Shut down. <laughs> nope. Uh -uh. It's the opposite of yes. <laughs> no. Damn. Yeah. All right. Well, I did improv, and that's the opposite of what you're supposed to do. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Proving, in fact, there are stupid questions. <laughs> um, do you feel, Chris, that? Struggling with trying to answer topics you knew nothing about um, has made you more creative in any way? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> then there we are. <laughs> if you could answer for me, then why ask the question? <laughs> well, I didn't intend to until I was three quarters of the way through the question, and then I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Sorry. I feel it has made me more creative. Like, I, 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 uh, I'm willing to ask stupid questions now, or more willing to ask stupid questions now. Well, we're, we're willing to knowingly ask stupid questions now than I was previously. <laughs> um, that's, that's that. It's a very small silo, but that's the that's how it's helped me. I'm a better person because of you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I have more lists of really random words, phrases, and topics now. <laughs> I was going to say also my search history has become very bizarre, but. Let's be honest. It, it was probably before. already was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel yeah, like you're holes. just pointing the finger at something that was already existing and now you're just using this as an excuse. Yeah. You're going to carry that baggage, both of you, yeah. <laughs> for me. Allison made me Google this. <laughs> so, when, so when he's carted off by the feds and yeah. he has to make a plea agreement, it's, it was Allison's fault. She I know this long Canadian time. and she told me to Google it. Sure, this sir. Is a, sure. This is a long con. I just was trying to build an alibi before this whole podcast started. <laughs> oh my god, I want no part of it. How many episodes ago? Are we still keeping one count? million. If we're keeping count. It's wow. just a binary, and I've lost. I've lost track. Yeah, it's uh one one zero zero one. I think this episode. Are you sure? Uh, no idea. Yes. Really? Wait, 11001? Yes. There's no way of fact checking this in the moment. <laughs> no, there is. I just looked at our okay. Slack channel. I haven't I didn't update it after the so, last one. So the last one is still on the I, last episode, which is 11000. So this is 11001. I feel like that means this is episode 25. Does that seem right? I have no, no idea. Maybe. That seems far I, too doesn't high. <laughs> But this is like 8, right? It's not 8. I think we have at least 12? 10. Oh, yeah. we've got more than that. We definitely, we, I, I think, I, we probably, I think if it's, I think 25 sounds like it could be accurate. Wow. Well, let's go to Google, 11001. I'm very impressed with us, everybody. Pat's on the shoulder. Yeah, that, that's 25. <laughs> so that really is the number. That's pretty amazing. So happy 25th Thank anniversary, Binary yeah. Jack. Wow. Look Passable and nudio to celebrate. Our consistency. Uh, pass a bowl. Is this like a bowl you eat out of or smoke? I'm a little pass confused. A... <laughs> um, well, also, can we be impressed for a second that I did binary math in my head, like in the middle of a conversation before checking on Google? That's, That's cool, true. right? That is pretty impressive. That is the There's reason party why trick. you are binary Gary. <laughs> I, um, is it would you like to hear, would you like to, sure. Probably. Would you like to hear the uh, like the creation of that name? Sure. Yes. I don't think we've heard okay. that on the show at least, and I don't think origin I've story. Really. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Um, the name is the name. The register name on Twitter is is sort of old. Probably, if I had to venture a guess, I would say eight years or so. Um, and I was not a developer at the time, but I was still a nerd, and I was the guy you called to fix computer things. And I was down in uh, Tampa with a buddy, and we were recording, and his girlfriend at the time. Um, called me Binary Gary to pick on me. And I really liked it. And it <laughs> stuck. And there is, 
And, and so then on this whiteboard where we're keeping all our notes for this recording session, someone drew a binary Gary. It's this little stick figure with like awesome muscles and a huge head. Um, <laughs> so for a long time, that was the picture on that account before I actually did anything with the account. It just sat there. I think I retweeted articles about um, Asian news and complained about. It's interesting. Things. It's interesting because Jazz Sequence come, has a similar origin story. It was not something that I chose. It was something that came out of a foreign, a forum, not foreign, forum. Um, because at the time I was going by Fibonacci Jazz. Um, and, which. That's a fun thought. Yeah. A yeah, bit more like, of the spelling conundrum. <laughs> yeah, which and the idea between behind Fibonacci Jazz was Fibonacci Jazz actually came from it's only five uh, syllables. <laughs> Fibonacci Jazz came from <laughs> a um twenty-five syllables. Um no, just five. I had twenty-five. <laughs> so Fibonacci. Eleven thousand and one <laughs> syllables in binary. Fibonacci. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, so Fib the Fibonacci sequence is obviously a mathematical sequence that basically makes no sense to normal humans. Um, and it is a sequence that every programmer is required to try to program in every programming class ever. Um, and uh, because it has it ascendingly, I mean, it's like, it's basically like a, a fractal type expansion. Anyway, uh, and combining that with, with jazz, uh, the word jazz, all that jazz. Um, it seemed like a really weird uh, juxtaposition that I really enjoyed the tension of. Um, so I actually wrote a song called Fake Math Fibonacci Jazz. Uh, and then Fibonacci Jazz came out of that. And then somebody on a forum said, as Jazz Sequence has said. And I thought that Jazz Sequence sounded a lot cooler. Fibonacci Jazz. It rolls off the tongue a bit better. Yeah, it does. Um, the Fibonacci sequence is where you, you add numbers to the previous number, is that correct? Yep. So one, one, two, three, five, eight. Uh, yeah, one, 14, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, uh, eight, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I I um <laughs> I uh I work with uh, someone who has proposed that they um would like to um they only use numbers from the Fibonacci sequence for uh, estimating estimating. Yeah. Yeah. We do that uh, like that. for um, story pointing. Yeah, Lace I mean, conceptually makes sense on. because it because you, it sort of forces you like as you get greater into complexity, you know, it's easy to only add an hour or two and things are unknown. In reality, unknowns equal lots of hours. So right, that factoring upward as you get larger in tasks yeah. makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah, well, and it's not a direct correlation, or it shouldn't be a direct correlation between the the number of points and hours. Like one story point shouldn't be an hour. One story point is like less than an hour, but it's like a general like it could be, you know, whatever. But then then because of that, because because something that's one story point could be like fifteen minutes or could be forty five minutes. That variation means that you're not gonna make your sprint or whatever super crazy. Um, because yeah. you've got that much buffer in like, yeah. and, then, and if you pointed a one pointer or a three pointer or whatever wrong, then you figure that out pretty quick and you point things better the next time. That's the theory. And the, and the whole, you know, I, I really stressed about estimation um, early on in my dev estimating days. And the reality is like, you get better at estimation when you do a lot of it and Sometimes you just miss, and that's but okay. But it's always bullshit. It's always, it, and at a certain point, you're like, okay, let me figure out the number of hours that I think it's going to be, and then I'm going to multiply that by two and divide it by three, and then like, take that as a fraction. I mean, like, you do some crazy math to, like, at some point, at least for me, at some point in your yeah. development career, you come up with, like, some weird, like, mathematical, like, okay, so I think it's going to be two hours, so I'm definitely going to say it's six. So it's funny you say that. Our um, our uh, engineering director several months ago posted this book. Like it was like a I don't know what it's called, like professional programmers how to guide or something. I mean, it was a pretty short PDF, a fun read. I should really figure out who it was and give credit because it was a nice read. Um, but I, he posted it, and I almost immediately said, "Oh, good, there's a chapter on estimation." And then I wrote as though I was quoting from the book, like, "Pick a number, pick another <laughs> number, multiply them together, write that number down." This will most assuredly not be your estimate, but now you fulfilled the obligation of creating an estimate. <laughs> and then eight blank pages. 
<laughs> add, add a 70% buffer to said number. <laughs> yeah, double it. Ignore it. Write something else down anyway. You're going to be wrong. It's an estimate. <laughs> Ask a friend. Take their number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I borrow an estimate? I, think, I, I think, also feel like... I think my estimation when I was freelancing was like, take, take what I think it's going to kind of be, multiply it by two, and then add two hours. <laughs> my, I had this problem too where, um, and this is probably like a universal thing, the more familiar I am, I am with like the requirement. So like, oh, you're going to do this thing that you've done three or four times before, and there's only a few little quirks on it. Well, that's going to take two hours. And then I clock it and it's like 30 minutes. But I've accounted for like, well, I need to pull the code base and blah, blah, blah. And so I, I'm, I end up like 70%, 75% high in the estimate. But then there's like a feature like, here's a thing you've never done before. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't seem like it should be too bad. Like four hours. And it ends up being like 16. So, I mean, I'm really blowing numbers out. I'm not that bad at my estimates. Yes, I am. It depends on the estimate. It doesn't matter. What I need is sunshine laws on my estimates so that <laughs> when I miss them high or low, I just need to know like, like at the end of the sprint, like, yeah, you were way the hell off here and way off here and sort of okay here. And ultimately, like your factor is you're, you're usually off by X amount, you know? I know that's a number someone keeps track of. Not me. I mean, I could, but one, that's uh, what project managers for, right? All one, my project managers that are listening, please let me know. Sunshine laws. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. Uh, when I worked uh, for web dev, one thing that Brad Williams uh, said to me is that when he does estimates, he always does estimates in factors of eight, um, yeah. like hours. Um, and that got me thinking about like looking at problems by like, this is going to take a day or this is going to take a half day or this is going to take three days. And, and that actually uh, dovetailed nicely into when I started working at HumanMade because we charge by the day. Um, so like you're gonna you're you're hiring us for like x many developer days per month um which which makes a lot of sense and it means that like you know this person is going to be on your project they might be not they might not be like working on like they might not be in code for like the full eight hours but they're going to be working on your project for the entire day that's what they're doing they're going to be doing other stuff too and we understand that and we're not going to be like you know dancing around it but they're still working on your project for the entire day yeah. I see for me, like a full day means that I am not adequately defined scope. Like if I say it's going to take a day, then I don't clearly understand the issue. Like if I can't break it down into yeah. blocks of under two hours each, and I, and then, I mean, the feature may be broken down into 17 different one hour blocks or 15 one hour blocks and one two hour block. That's okay for me. And I may come back and say, well, you know, here it is at 17 or whatever number I just said. Right. But if I say it's a day, like I clearly have not thought it through because what I think I can handle in a day is completely unreasonable. Yeah. Well, I guess like I like I do things by days, but then I also like within the day it's broken down into smaller things. So because I can't, I otherwise I get overwhelmed by a blanket umbrella. I'm like, no, no, baby steps all the way. Like I need smaller, smaller chunks and smaller tasks. Otherwise, I'll just be like, oh, I have to do this page. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? <laughs> Break the page. It's so hard to get started on tasks like that too, where. It's like this big umbrella, you know, like I need to define like what needs to happen first and then next, or if I get sick of this, can I work on this in parallel, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff's important. Um, welcome, welcome to Binary Jazz, where we talk all about development all the time. It sort of got there. I was thinking the same thing, like, like, is Nudia Sturgeon like a new estimation tactic? No. Yeah. <laughs> Man, shot down all over the place today. Have I ever brought, I don't think I've ever brought something that ha has anything to do with code or development. To the Studio assertion .js. No, and that's, I mean, that's part of the fun of, of the podcast. I, I was explaining the podcast to somebody at a WordCamp and he's like, oh, is it a development podcast? I'm like, no, not at all. It's, it's, kind, it of about, podcast? it's kind of about nothing. Uh, and then we talk about it. I mean, we thought it's, it's I had, I had to explain the, I had to explain the format and, you know, to communicate what the, the show was because it's not really about it. It's tough. It's tough. It doesn't really have a nice elevator pitch, you know? But I mean, the it's thing is like that we all, words you can say. we all come from that background because we all work together. So like yes. it kind of tangentially is about it because that's yeah. sort of where our interests lie generally, but, but no, it's not. Also, Gary wants to categorize everything. So. Yeah. Well, we do come back to like, I mean, I, we have reoccurring themes, I think. So that's what I always explain to people is that there's overlap there. And I was like, and we almost always come back to say like, 
nerdy things or food things or <laughs> space things yeah, or it's true. It's like we do have speaking, our constant. Oh, I was gonna say speaking of space things, it's important the readers know about a launch that will happen before this podcast is released. Never mind. So <laughs> we are at the point of the show. It's a uh -huh. super exciting launch. Saturday morning at between like three thirty and four thirty in the morning. Um, the uh, Parker Solar Probe is being lobbed out of there, out in space, and it's going to circle the sun, and can't wait. Anyway. Maybe, maybe uh, the more relevant pitch here would be that if you want to stay in touch with these launches and not have to yeah. somehow magically know that they're happening before that they happen is to follow Ground Control Bot. <laughs> yes, there's yes. Ground Control Bot on Twitter, uh, which is what, at Ground Control? No, I don't know what it is. Go to groundcontrolbot.space and figure out what Twitter user is. Okay, I can't great. Remember. And then there's also... I think uh, it was like high ground control something. And then there's also a uh, Slack bot. That yeah, you can install on your Slack team and be notified. I wake up in the morning and go, oh, I'm glad I missed that launch. <laughs> I got up on Tuesday. There was one, uh, one, uh, one 18 Tuesday morning um, down the road from me, Kennedy Space Center. Um, and I got up and I, it, was, um, it was completely unremarkable. And the cool thing about that is like, which are the point with the regularity of launches of the Falcon 9 vehicle, that the launching and landing from Kennedy Space Center is like, oh, good. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. This was the second launch of the Block 5, so that was exciting. But otherwise, I might not get up for middle of the night launches unless there's something special. Parker Solar Probe, we get that for. All right, so we've, yeah, we've reached What's the What's new to mean? We <laughs> get to what it is if we're going to get to listener questions. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Nudiostertium is uh, a word for, <laughs> I was thinking we were just going to skip to users' questions. I was like, we'll never know. It'll just, be... <laughs> no. Um, it means the day before yesterday. What? No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, I guess in what is context it... would you use that? Wait, wait. If so I read what... that in a book, I would, oh man. Is it, is it, does it? Do you know what I had? I had the greatest Dyson sphere nudiostertion. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> it, so it, it actually means the day before yesterday. It's not like those, the phrase the day before yesterday is a nudiostertion. No, it actually means the day before, of or relating yeah. to the day before yesterday. So tertius, which is now, now is the third day. Yeah. How would you use it? Nobody asked me how I would use it in a sentence, thank goodness, because... <laughs> <laughs> because that was something you actually knew. <laughs> well, I've learned my lesson because the answer is, topic today <laughs> is nudity. <laughs> <laughs> topic today. No, it's not. It's today. <laughs> <laughs> the topic two days ago is... The topic's today. Was, it's, not, it's not... That would have been, be. been an amazing answer if I was just like, the topic from two days ago is <laughs> nudity astertia. <laughs> or, but, but at that point, would it be the topic from two days ago will be Nudiostertion? Because are we time traveling in the context of the sentence? Oh, God, you're just oh, making no. my head hurt. I think we need reader questions. Okay, great. <laughs> reader questions? Readers. We have readers now. I, yes. I, yes. I'm so uh, optimistic that we will uh, we'll sort out this uh, show, uh, not show notes. Um, what are we going to do? We're gonna transcriptions. Yes, <laughs> that's the word. Twenty four bucks a month. How do you say uh, transcribe? That's it. Twenty four bucks a month. Help us. Help us. Help us transcribe our podcast. Okay. Uh, Danette asks. Or or just do it. Comments. You're welcome to. Yes. Or just do Send it. That'd be awesome. Filing. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Uh, Danette says, Chris, your pronunciation of farfalle was fantastic. I am. I was impressed and not surprised to hear that you had studied Italian. Bravo. You may already know then the translation of farfalle is not bow ties as the pasta is commonly referred to, but butterflies, which is true. Uh, nobody, says, so. nobody says butterfly pasta, probably because butterflies are pretty, and even those of us who do not do eat animals will sometimes resist eating the more attractive slash cute animals. Not that ties are all that appetizing. Anyhow, great Italian accent. Question, do you or have you ever worn a tie for events Uniforms, pleasures, do you like them? See the point of them? What kind and color do you like? P.S. I'm with Lisa. I would also enjoy more, more well, actually, is from Allison. <laughs> so to answer your oh. question, Danette, uh, I used to wear a tie every day, almost every day, because I worked at one of those grocery stores where the, where the employees wear a tie. Um, 
and it wasn't a bow tie it was an actual tie tie but like that was part of my uniform is i had to to wear a tie so and and then like a collared shirt and like a button up all that stuff um and it was obnoxious but i went to catholic school so like i was <laughs> used to like stupid uniforms um so my the only way that i could really like express myself in like this wearing a stupid tie to work thing was by getting ties that were actually appealing to me so like i got like and like, of course I was a goth. So like I had these like black on black, like weird pattern design thing. And, and like, I had different ones and like, I had to figure out like exactly like what sort of ties appealed to me because ties are kind of dumb. Um, I don't see the point of them. I do wear them on occasion because I had them still and um, I know how to tie a tie. Um, and so I use that knowledge, but I try not to wear them frequently because I try not to go think to things that are so formal that I would require a tie. Wow. Gary. I will ties. say. Gary does wore a tie at some point because you were like corporate Gary. That's not That's true. Yeah. Um, I will say that um, Danette took a bold approach, pandering for Chris. <laughs> it's very bold. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, and a smart approach considering he's the one that reads the questions. So. <laughs> pandering to me would be completely ineffective and chris would delete it <laughs> that's not true <laughs> that's not true um not true uh yeah i've worn ties i've worn ties many times um i even wore ties when i back in the day i worked at radio shack and i printed business cards for myself and called myself a um business something consultant and wore a tie and got like professional customers to drive past other radio shacks to come see me to sell them crap um but I mean, I was really ultimately interested in not selling crap, but getting them crap that they weren't going to buy in return, like stuff that solved the problems they were trying to solve. Um, and I would just be like, hey, text me. I'll get your order ready and you can come and pay for it. And did a lot of silly stuff like that that wasn't really a normal thing back in that day and time. Um, I have worn ties to other events. I, uh, I generally don't like ties, but I mean, if the event calls for it, I'll wear it. I don't really avoid events that require ties because, to be frank, I'm not invited to a lot of events. <laughs> What is what your tie? Kind of, how big is your tie collection currently? I probably, I probably, I mean, I've gone through many for the years, but I tend to like, when I get bored of the tie, it tends to go in the bag that goes to, you know, whatever thrift store. Um, I, uh, I did have a tie for a while. It was SpongeBob square tie. So it was SpongeBob and it was cut off right at the waist. So it didn't have a point. That was a nice one. Um, <laughs> I do have a sentimental tie that um, a friend of mine found for me when I was in high school because it's totally like not, cool looking now but it has like some french horns and stuff on it and it's maroon um i don't know i probably have a half dozen ties and i i don't know that i've worn one in the last year i did wear one um at to a call at web dev why did i do that i dressed why up did you do that? <laughs> just to be silly i mean to be silly i, I also wore a hot dog costume to a that's team true. call on a friday i i think that's fun when you're doing like video calls i mean I'm not, I don't go out in public dressed as a hot dog very often. Um, <laughs> I'm so glad that sentence ended with very often. <laughs> I mean, I, I have, obviously. That's why um, we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like regular attire. But yeah, I, I mean, I'll wear a tie. I, I prefer not to, but if I have to. I, I don't really have any, I can tie a tie. Bow tie is a different story. Can I tie yeah, a bow tie? tie? Do you have a color palette that you would go to for ties? No, I mean, just whatever. No, I have, no. I, dark. Every color, as long as it's dark. Black on if black. Mat, if black it on sort of matches the black. shirt, yeah. good enough for me, you know? And if still have that black says, black one. does not match, she's probably right. <laughs> How much matching really needs to happen, though, with a tie? Not much. I, I mean, I'm wearing a tie, for crying out loud. I made the effort, right? That seems like it should be exactly. enough. Family weddings, I feel like, are tie affairs. Mm -hmm. Depends on your family. <laughs> Wed weddings and funerals. Yeah, yeah. Although the last three funerals I've been to, I think I just did a polo shirt. You know, like button up for three buttons, you know? Were you on a polo shirt? <laughs> I don't know what a polo shirt. <laughs> I, I have several. I have probably have more polo shirts than I have ties. Really? That's yeah. Fascinating. And they're all solid colors, so. Green, red, two reds. Actually. That's Perfect. typical for a polo shirt, though, Brown. right? Solid. Yeah. I think sometimes they have like stripes. Or
Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. 